Hey guys, I just got back from the doctor. That's why I'm so dressed up. I didn't like his diagnosis. He told me I was crazy. I said, I want a second opinion. He said, okay, you ugly too. <laughs> I can't help it guys. I gotta, I gotta do this. I know a lot of you don't like this. Y'all get to the point, get to the point. But hey, Rodney Dangerfield, that's my man. You know that. But what I want to talk about today, I'm getting ready to go on a very long trip probably 6,000 miles round trip at least. I do a lot of testing while I'm on that trip, a lot of gauge watching. But because of my near miss that I had that last camping trip we went up to uh, Louisiana, North Louisiana, and I, some, either somebody pulled my pin out or it came out, don't know which. But I took some of you guys' advice and bought one of these locking pins, so Hopefully that's going to take care of that problem. But what I want to see today is what do you what do you want to happen if you come un, unhitched? What should happen? Do you want this emergency release to just pull and stop the trailer in the middle of the I-10 with your truck attached? I don't know. Those 18 wheelers are up here in the food chain and we're down here even even with this big rig so i don't know that that's the best thing to happen and after doing a little research and stuff I, i've kind of concluded that i agree with that now this should not be weaved through your chain like most of the dealers sell them to you and it should not be attached to your hook your safety chain hook it should be a separate, separate. And when you pull this, if you saw the last video, it locks the brakes up on the trailer and you're gonna stop. Now, if you're in the wrong lane, you know, if you're lucky, you can maybe pull over, but I don't want that to happen personally. I think the ideal thing that you want to happen is that when it comes unhooked, and that's why they tell you to cross these chains, and we're going to check this, but when it comes unhooked, ideally you want the trailer to sit on top of the chains and still have control of your trailer brakes with your, uh, with your umbilical card here. Now you can see I'm a little ways uh, from my ball already and these chains aren't even tight. so. I think I already see a problem. If I slack this off to the point where it would probably be, I think it will hold the, the camper up, but I think it's gonna pull this out. Now, that wouldn't be the, the worst thing in the world because you've, got, uh, you've still got your truck brakes, you know, and this is a relatively light camper, but ideally you'd wanna stay attached here. So I think one of the things that I'm going to need to do is extend this or change it out and put a different one. It's getting old anyway, but we'll see in a moment. So let's go ahead and drop this thing down in this in the scenario right now that if we came unhooked, let's see what would happen. Now I'm not going to hook this up because this is the last resort right here. This is if you if your chains break and you know you completely detached from your camper, then this is the last resort. Instead of your camper mowing down people on the freeway, it's gonna to come to a screeching halt. It's not gonna be pretty either way you go, but that's the way it's gonna be. So let's just lower it down and see. And oh by the way. You know, you're not supposed to tell people that you're going on vacation and you're going to do this and stuff because the crooks can come and rob you. Don't even think about it, criminals. You don't even want to mess with this place. And I'll show you why. In fact, here's the reason why right here. Think about it before you try anything like that. Now let's try to simulate what would happen right here if we lost it. Let's 
see what we got going on right here. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna hold that right now and pull it pull it out because I don't want to break it. So we've already identified one potential issue, right? The chains are crossed. Now, if you need more shorter chains, you can twist them. But let's just see if this cross method works. The thing you don't want to happen is for this to hit the ground. Hopefully, you want to stay attached, keep the umbilical attached. That's ideal. It might sway around a little bit. I hit the bottom of my, my jack, so I can't go any lower. Tell you what I'll do is I'll go get my, uh, my floor jack, and we'll jack the damn thing up and go all the way. What the hell? Okay, let's come on down all the way and see where we touch first. By the way, if you try this, make sure your leveling jacks are where they should be or up. And it looks like it's as designed. That's awful close to the pavement there though. I think what I'll do when I hook back up again is to Put a couple of twists in the chain because you know you know and you can't expect this thing to swing back and forth i mean but if you got your trailer brakes as long as you don't have have that card pulled i think that's the best scenario so i just wanted to show you that we'll go ahead and pick her back up now Look like the mighty ram doesn't really give a damn how much you load the back end of it. This jack does though. It says three ton, but I did a, I did a review on it. Don't get one. Get at least a four ton if you're going to be jacking up a ram. Probably five really. So yeah, this cradle setup is what they recommend. But you can see that that's going to take a lot of fine tuning to get those chains just the right length. So that's really it. Those are some of the considerations. I'm going to look hard at what I can do. See if there's any slack under here. This runs back to that, that box. So I'm not sure what I can do about it. But it's, I think it's time to change it anyway. So I may just go and get another one and put that on. So I hope this kind of gives you some ideas on, you know, things to look at. We take all this stuff for granted, at least I have for years. And, uh, you know, you just kind of assume, oh, everything's going to be all right. But for me, I want to stay hooked up with my chains, keeping the tongue off the concrete. Yeah, it's going to bounce back and forth a little bit and probably whatnot. It's not going to be the most pleasant experience, but it's going to probably keep you from being run over by an 18-wheeler or flipping or whatever. Uh, ideally, you want your umbilical hooked up so you can have trailer brakes too. I think with, with my light set up, I can, I can handle it with just my truck brakes. Uh, but, you know, just depends on what you're towing and what you're doing. You don't want to go jackknifing in the middle of I-10 or somewhere. So, anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Until next time. Adiós.